SpaceX has recently been focusing all the company's resources on preparing for the first orbital flight. However, there are still a number of challenges that the company must overcome. They include the difficulty of conducting the two-stage tests of Starship and waiting for the FAA's approval. Recently, speaking on a panel at the 36th Space Symposium, President and Chief Operating Officer of SpaceX, Gwyn Shotwell, announced liquid oxygen shortages are complicating SpaceX's launch plans. We're actually going to be impacted this year with the lack of liquid oxygen for launch, she revealed. We certainly are going to make sure the hospitals are going to have the oxygen that they need. But for anybody who has liquid oxygen to spare, send me an email. The difficulties in securing supplies of liquid oxygen is one of the company's biggest supply chain concerns because SpaceX's next-gen Raptor engine, which will power the company's enormous Starship Deep Space deep space transportation system, employs supercooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. The company's previous engines Merlin and Kestrel have also used liquid oxygen, though with refined kerosene rather than methane. The reaction between propellants in a rocket engine creates heat and exhaust gases that are accelerated through a nozzle, creating thrust that pushes against Earth and propels the rocket up to space. Therefore, the shortage of liquid oxygen will directly cause delays for upcoming flights. So how does a liquid oxygen shortage occur? The demand for liquid oxygen has soared in recent weeks because of the rise of the COVID-19 cases caused by the Delta variant. Hospitals use liquid oxygen as a source of oxygen for ventilators. And the US continues to be the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 38,217,956 cases with 632,223 fatalities according to the latest update on Thursday morning by Johns Hopkins University. Therefore, this demand has increased in recent times. Liquid oxygen is also used to purify water across the United States. In Florida, the Orlando Utilities Commission announced on August 20th that its weekly deliveries of liquid oxygen used in water purification systems have been cut by up to 50%. Officials asked city residents and businesses to reduce their use of water to avoid water shortages that could be caused by reduced capacity of its purification systems. It's quite stressful right now, so it's understandable that it will affect SpaceX. How will this liquid oxygen deficiency affect SpaceX and the space industry as a whole? Shotwell didn't elaborate on the impacts of the liquid oxygen shortage on its launch schedule. The company has not launched a Falcon 9 rocket since June 30th, which is unusual. However, Shotwell said that the delay is because they paused Starlink launches to focus on manufacturing its next-gen Starlink satellites equipped with laser links. However, SpaceX scheduled to end that break with the Falcon 9 launch of a Cargo Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station on August 28th from the Kennedy Space Center. However, launching Falcon 9 despite the current shortage of liquid oxygen we can see that SpaceX is really trying its best to launch this year as much as possible. Because every Falcon 9 launch also consumes a lot of fuel, of which at full power, the 9 engines consume 3,200 pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen per second. That's a huge amount of fuel and liquid oxygen. This will also have an impact on the launch of Starship into orbit in the coming months. According to Elon Musk, the fuel on Starship is 78% of propellant being liquid oxygen with only 22% being fuel. The liquid oxygen scarcity is having an impact on other businesses as well. In a tweet after the conference session, Tori Bruno, chief executive of United Launch Alliance, said that the government contractor that supplies nitrogen for its launch facilities at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California is now working on addressing the liquid oxygen shortage in Florida. That could impact plans for the launch of the Landsat 9 spacecraft from Vandenberg on an Atlas V, currently scheduled for September 16th. Working that situation now, Bruno said. Well, on to more bizarre news, but honestly, I'm not that surprised. Amazon, Jeff Bezos' brainchild, has challenged Starlink, Musk's call to action on worldwide available internet access. Jeff Bezos' team doesn't seem to give up on any project to bring the ambition to beat Elon Musk and SpaceX. 
Recently, Amazon is urging the Federal Communications Commission to dismiss SpaceX's revised plans for its second-generation Starlink constellation. Amazon's protest letter comes as the company develops its own satellite internet system called Project Kuiper, which is still a project which means that it hasn't even taken off yet. Starlink, on the other hand, is already serving 100,000 users across the globe through 1,700 satellites in orbit. That's 1,700 satellites more than what Amazon has in the... <laughs> I'm sorry. The network is currently delivering download speeds from 50 megs to 150 megabytes per second or higher. But to improve coverage and upgrade speeds, SpaceX is seeking FCC clearance to operate a second generation Starlink network comprising nearly 30,000 satellites. Wow! Amazon claims the plan is too broad and speculative and thus breaks the FCC's rules on applying for satellite deployments. The e-commerce giant notes SpaceX's novel approach of applying for two mutually exclusive configurations is at odds with both the Commission's rules and public policy and we urge the Commission to dismiss this amendment. Amazon says in the letter, the Commission's rules require that SpaceX settle the details of its proposed amendment before filing its application, not after. <laughs> As a result, Amazon is calling on the FCC to dismiss the plan in its current form. According to Amazon, relaxing the rules risks encouraging SpaceX and other companies <laughs> other companies, to seek clearance for speculative applications that try to lock in access for various satellite configurations. SpaceX did not immediately respond to that request, however, after reading an article about that request, Elon expressed, Turns out, Bezos retired in order to pursue a full-time job filing lawsuits against SpaceX. In addition, the company provided two configurations because the first one relies on the still under development Starship craft to deliver the Starlink satellites. The second configuration taps existing Falcon 9 reusable rockets. Under either configuration, the revised Gen 2 system will further optimize service to customers and better meet demand for low latency, high bandwidth broadband services, especially in undeserved and unserved areas, all while using slightly fewer satellites, SpaceX says. The letter comes shortly after former Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos slammed. NASA for giving SpaceX a lunar landing contract over his own spaceflight company Blue Origin. Oh. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.